Today is the solstice, the day where the sun stands still. In other words, it's been moving further north, further north every day. And now it stops. And then tomorrow it's going to start moving south. It's one of the few days of the year that's not simply a convention. The sun didn't ask permission of people to have this as his holiday. In fact, it's not a holiday at all. But we do mark it as the beginning of the summer. We can take the symbolism of the sun standing still. We need to get our minds to stand still. We've been wandering around for who knows how long. And it's the nature of the mind to wander. That's been its habit for all, all along. And the Buddha is basically saying you don't have to wander. You can look inside, dig down inside. There's something in there that doesn't change, and that's something that has a lot more happiness, a lot more bliss than the happiness we get from wandering around. Think about the Buddha's knowledge in the night of his awakening, of the many lifetimes he'd been through. And they boiled down to not much. Appearance, name, what he said called what he called clan, which we would say species. Experience of pleasure and pain, what food he ate. And now he passed away. That was it. Eating, pleasure, pain, dying. Over and over and over again. That's what our wandering does. We're looking for pleasures. We often gather up pain as well. So it's time to ask ourselves, maybe it's time to stop. Look inside. Maybe there's something more valuable if you dig deep inside and stop and stand still. And at the very least, you're going to see things a lot more clearly when you stand still. If you run past something, then people ask you, well, what was that? You have a blur, and maybe you can piece together little bits and pieces of the blur and say what you saw. But if you really want to understand what it was, if it was for a tree or a mountain scene, it's best to stand still. And then you can see things a lot more clearly, see the relationships among them a lot more clearly as well. In the same way with the mind. When you get the mind to stand still, you begin to see how the mind forms thoughts. And how it jumps into those thoughts and goes riding with them. You want to get at the, at the point where they were just beginning to coalesce. And there are different stages, but you haven't entered into them yet. You want to watch those stages, because you begin to realize there's not much there. And yet we can make all kinds of things out of it. We're proud of the fact that we can make a lot of worlds out of almost nothing. But that's where we end up with almost nothing. Sometimes we end up worse than with almost nothing. We do something really unskillful in one particular lifetime or one particular identity. And those unskillful results are going to reverberate for a long time. So take time to stand still. There's a lot to learn and a lot of ways to benefit from standing still as well.